Bam! Mr. Teru, in this lesson we are going to look at a particular type of problem that you might see in an analytical geometry book. Uh, that is, I'm going to give you the equation of two tangent lines to a circle and a point that that circle must pass through, and you're going to need to be responsible for finding the equation of that circle. Well, you can see by the diagram there's actually two solutions. Uh, and what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to, I'm going to uh, geometrically map out sort of a thought process. What do we need to look at in the relationships in this graph? Then I'm going to step out and reveal all the steps that we're going to go through to do the solution. And then we'll get to the example. Uh, it'd be a good time maybe, uh, hopefully with this prelude or this intro to the video, uh, you can maybe pause the lesson and try the problem on your own and see my solution. Okay, so, and it's going to be a relatively involved process, so I'm not going to just sort of talk and write the whole thing out. I'm going to reveal the solution in, in steps and describe or explain any kind of issues I think you might have along the way. And hopefully, by the end of the lesson, uh, you can totally understand these problems and maybe uh, get a review of some other concepts uh, that you need to know. Okay, so, what do you need to write the equation of a circle? You need a point and a ra uh, the center and the, well, the point is the center, right? You need to point a center and the radius. Okay, center and radius, center and radius, a point and a distance. So if I'm going to come up with the equation of these two circles, well, the first thing I need, of course, to is to figure out is where is the center? Okay, where is the center? Well, what's special about a circle? Every point is an equal distance from the center. So let's put a center here, and the center of this circle is, I don't know, up here somewhere in the middle. It looks like a pretty decent approximation of where it could be. And since the one thing that's special about a circle is every point is the same distance away from the center, let's draw a radius here and a radius here. Now those two radiuses, of course, are going to be equal because they're radiuses within the same circle. And another relationship graphically you should know or geometrically you should know, I know you guys do if you're watching this lesson, it's a pretty advanced one, is the tangent line is perpendicular to the radius, right? So their slopes are opposite reciprocal, even though we're not going to use that fact in this particular lesson, the whole opposite reciprocal thing, but those tangent lines and those radiuses are going to be perpendicular. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you the coordinates of this point here, the given point, but that's it. So we need a way of describing the center of these circles, and we're going to do that with the equation of a line. And that line is going to come through the intersection of these tangent lines and pass through the center of these circles. So the equation of that line, whatever it is, y equals mx plus b or something, that's going to allow us to write um, some kind of coordinate where the x coordinate of the center is, well, x, and then we have an expression knowing x, well, we could write y in. So basically it's going to be kind of like the point x comma mx plus b or something like that. How are we going to come up with the equation of that line? Well, what do you need for the equation of a line? A point. Oh, okay, our point's going to be there. That's the first thing we're going to find is a point where those tangent lines intersect. And you need a slope. Well, I'm going to tell you the slope of the two lines, of course. I'm going to give you the equations of those lines, so we'll know the slope of those two lines. And we need some kind of way of figuring out the slope of the line that goes through the center of those uh, well, through the centers of those circles. Look at what we got going on here. I know it's a really advanced class, and, and I please, I'm, I hope I'm not insulting anyone here. I just want to review this a little bit uh, for anyone that might need it. We've got two triangles in this diagram, and we have two legs of right triangles uh, which are congruent, and we have opposite these right angles we have. Hypotenuse, which is our hypotenuses, which are congruent, uh, and we're looking at. You know, of course, it looks like I just drew one line, but really, it's a hypotenuse of that triangle, hypotenuse of that triangle. So, by the reflexive property, we have two triangles which are congruent by by hypotenuse leg. So, if those triangles are congruent by hypotenuse leg, then this angle is going to be equal to that angle by corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Okay, but what that means is, is the line going between these tangent lines, the, the new line passing through the center of the circles, is an angle bisector. Okay, whoop de doo right? Well, that means, of course, these angles are equal. Now, <sighs> angles, lines, slope, slope is rise over run, change in y over change in x, change in y, y over x. Y over x, that's tangent. Tangent of theta uh, of course, theta being a standard position angle, an angle that starts off the positive side of the x-axis and goes counterclockwise, again, something I know you probably already know. 
uh, but please just allow me to go through this. The tangent of theta is equal to slope when theta is the angle between the line and the positive side of the x-axis. So we're going to work with some kind of tangent formula to allow us to find the slope of this line uh, coming up with that idea that we're talking about an angle bisector, some kind of average between the slope of this line and the slope of that line. So let me step off. We're, I'm going to write down the steps we're going to go through and get to that example right now. No, 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 no. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to find the intersection point of these tangent lines right there using substitution or linear combination method. We're going to find the slope of the uh, angle bisector by using the tangent of alpha plus beta is equal to the tangent of alpha plus tangent of beta in, over 1 minus tangent of alpha uh, times tangent of beta. And then we're going to find that sum between the angle. Remember, I'll be coming off the positive side of the x-axis. We're going to have that angle alpha and this angle, uh, well, not alpha again, but beta, we're going to add those two angles together, and then we're going to divide that angle by 2. So we have a half angle identity for tangent, which is equal to 1 minus cosine uh, of alpha plus beta over the sine of alpha plus beta. We're going to add, like say, you know, if this has got a, an angle of 10 degrees, we're not going to find the angle in terms of d degrees or radians. We're just going to work through the summation and the half angle identities uh, to find the slope of the average angle, but just put some concrete numbers on it. If this were, say, 10 degrees, and this were an angle of, oh, I don't know, 50 degrees, then 10 degrees plus 50 degrees would open up to 60 degrees, add those angles, but then when we divide it, 60 divided by 2 would be 30. Uh, so let's see here. We have an angle of 10, we have an angle of 30, we have an angle of 50. That would leave us 20 degrees uh, between the first tangent line and this angle bisector and then from that between that and the second tangent line. So this process of adding the angle, setting up a tangent function, and then taking uh, the tangent of half of that angle, and again with tangent of theta being equal to y over x, changing y over changing x, equaling slope, uh, we can find the slope of that angle bisector without being you know, completely calculator dependent. Then we're going to write the equation now that we have a point uh, that intersection and a slope, we're going to write the equation of that angle bisector, again that one right there, and then use the formula for that line uh, to write sort of a general form of the coordinates for the center of our circle, or as we can see it'll turn out to again be two circles, so we'll have two centers. Uh, we're going to set up the distance once we have some kind of uh, equation that describes uh, the placement in general terms of these centers, we're going to set up a distance between the center and the given point, the center and the tangent line, using this formula here. When you have an equation of a line in the ter in form of ax plus by plus c is equal to zero, then almost like standard form, but set equal to zero instead of equal to a constant, and a given point not on that line, then the distance between a point and a line in this format is equal to the absolute value of a times x sub i, plus b times y sub i plus c over uh, the absolute value of that over the square root of a squared plus b squared. So again, we're going to set up a distance between the center uh, in general terms and the given point, set up an equation for the distance between the center uh, and one of the tangent lines, and then we're going to set those equations equal to each other and uh, solve for, well, continue solving for x and or x and y uh, and in this same, we'll have two sets of answers, but we're going to set those equal to each other. We're going to solve for x and y. We're going to find the equation, or if not find the equation, but find the coordinates of those two centers. And then we're going to find each corresponding radius and finish uh, with just simply writing the answer, the equation of that circle and then that one. Let's get on to our example. So our example, find the equation of the circle or circles which are tangent to the lines 2x plus 3y plus 10 is equal to 0 and 2x minus 3y plus 2 is e equal to 0 as well and these circles must pass through, pass through 0, 5. Always think it's a very good idea to draw uh, the, you know, 
what's going on in a problem when you're dealing with a question that's just geometry. So I, I drew my two lines, I kind of guesstimated about what my circles would look like, and I did a little bit of linear combination to find the intersection point between those tangent lines. Now we have a point, uh, now, we need a, now that we have a point, we need a slope uh, for that angle bisector, because again, the line that is going to bisect the angle created by these two uh, tangents will pass through the center of our circles, and thus we have a way of describing, again, those, those centers. And at this point, I'm not totally in love with this problem. Uh, by the way, I just put in words what I also put, uh, said in the video earlier, that the slope of a line is equal to the tangent of theta if theta is the angle between the line uh, and the positive side of the x-axis, going back to those standard position angles that we first learned at the beginning of trigonometry. And a reason why I'm not in love with the problem, uh, I don't often do requests from viewers simply because they don't have time. I, I teach high school full time, and I'm always teaching three or four preps at the same time. But this is, you know, I'm making this lesson during the summer, and this problem is inspired by a question from a viewer. So hopefully they're watching this and getting some help. I'm not really in love with the fact that the angle, uh, the way these the, these lines given, the slopes come out to be two thirds and negative two thirds. And really, before we even do all the formal math to show you how to find the, the slope of the angle bisector, it's kind of given away in this particular problem, but I want to go through the process in case you have a similar problem, but your slopes aren't quite this sort of special case. If you go from here, uh, well, I mean, it, you know, I can graph, I mean, all you need to graph a line is a point and a slope, so whether that point's an intersection point or the x and y intercepts, but just going from this point, if I go up two and uh, over three and I get to that other point that's on the line and I go up two into the uh, left three instead of the right three for the negative slope, well, a rise of two and a run of three, a rise of two and a run of three, this angle, this acute angle alpha uh, on the right from the positive side of the x-axis is going to be equal to this uh, this angle over here from the negative side of the x-axis and our line. And that means that, you know, like I say, if this is 10 degrees, then this little piece over here would be 10 degrees, or making beta 170. Well, if I have 10 plus 170, that adds up to 180. And then when I take the average, that alpha plus beta divided by 2 that you saw me write in the notes, well, half of 180 is equal to 90 degrees. So we're going to really have a vertical angle bisector. I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of uh, side explanation when we get to the part where we start trying to find the, that, well, what we know is going to be a perpendicular uh, or undefined slope, but I'm going to kind of do a little side thing, like, and just say, you know, well, if this wasn't kind of like a special case, then this is how you'd find the sine of alpha plus beta divided by 2, uh, excuse me, the sine of alpha plus beta and the cosine of alpha plus beta, so you could walk through that half angle identity. Uh, again, we do have kind of a special case from this particular problem. Not in love with it, but I'm answering uh, a viewer's question. So I'm going to step off right now, and even though we've already discussed how this angle bisector, I kind of already know it's going to be vertical. I want to walk through those steps I showed you in the notes, uh, working through the tangent of alpha plus beta, and then working through the half angle identity so I can find the, the slope uh, of that angle bisector, of that tangent of that alpha plus beta divided by 2. All right? Okay, so working through this process and knowing the tangent of alpha is two-thirds and the tangent of beta is negative two-thirds, I'm working through the tangent of alpha plus beta, uh, the sum of those two angles, so that we can then take the average of those two angles, that half-angle identity, and find the slope of the angle bisector, without being reliant on a calculator. The tangent of alpha plus tangent of beta over one minus tangent of alpha times tangent of beta. You work all of that out and you get an answer of zero. Well, remember that tangent of an angle is y over x. The only way y over x is going to come out to be an answer of zero is if the y coordinate or value is equal to zero. So we either need to be on the positive side of the x-axis and have the sum of these two angles equal zero, or, which is impossible, right, because we saw that those two lines had slope to them with the slope of two-thirds, so they must be adding up to 180 degrees. And thus, uh, the sine of that sum, the sine of those two angles added together, the sine of pi or 180 degrees is zero, and the cosine is going to be equal to 
negative 1. And I'm still going to go through the whole process and show you how to find the slope of that angle bisector, but again, we already know this is kind of a special case. So if we had added, just as an example, okay, side note, if we had added alpha plus beta uh, and got some kind of sum uh, or value from this, this sum identity of, say, negative 4 thirds, well, the tangent is negative in quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. And with just the context of this problem, you're going to be in quadrant 2. So setting up a ratio of y over x, 4 over negative 3, because we're moving to the left, so we have like negative movement along the x-axis, Pythagorean theorem would say that the hypotenuse of a reference triangle would be equal to 5. And then the sine of the sum of those two angles would be 4 fifths, and the cosine of the sum of those two angles would be negative uh, 3 fifths. And you, need the, and you need the sine of that sum and the cosine of that sum because, well, the half angle identities, there's three versions, but the, and they all use some version of sine and cosine, uh, and the one that I'm going to use uh, needs you to know both of these ratios. So we're going to work out now the half angle identity to find the tangent of alpha plus beta uh, divided by 2. So we have the tangent of alpha plus beta divided by 2 comes out to be 1 minus the cosine of alpha plus beta divided by the sine of alpha plus beta. I'm picking uh, this version of the half angle identity because there's only one term in the denominator and that would save me some work if uh, you know the problem didn't come out to be where the uh, tangent of that half angle was undefined and thus you know slopes which are undefined that only happens when the line is vertical so the equation of the angle bisector is x is equal uh, to 3 and you know if you're doing a problem like this that uh, isn't quite this kind of special case scenario we got going on here and this final answer came out to be maybe, I don't know, one-third, then you would just, you know, use point slopes form and say, well, my y minus y sub 1 is equal to that one-third. Remember, this is, I don't want to find out what uh, theta plus b or beta, uh, alpha plus beta over 2 is. I want that ratio, which is the slope. So you'd say something like, again, y minus y sub 1 is equal to that say one-third, like I said, times x minus x sub 1 and write the equation of that angle bisector. Okay, well, <clears throat> this, the point of this angle bisector is so that we can come up with uh, a general form, uh, an equation, if you will, that describes uh, the center of these circles, the center being, you know, h, k. Well, in this case, I know what the x-coordinate is. It's going to be 3, and the y-coordinate, well, when you write the equation of a line, uh, a vertical line, all I care about is that every point on the line has an x-coordinate of 3. I don't care what y is. And so our general form for the center of these circles is going to be 3y. Again, if it's not that special case, and uh, we could write the equation of this angle bisector in a slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, then the, des the description for the center of that circle would be x comma and, you know, mx plus b. You know, what is y equal to in terms of x? And so maybe it'd be like x equals one-third x plus five or something like that. But we don't in this problem, and so the center of our circles is simply going to be three comma y. I'm going to get all this out of the way, clear out the board, and we're going to start working on setting up those two distances. The distance between uh, the center of our circle and the given point, and the distance between the center of our circles and, you know, one of the tangent lines. I'm, I'm just going to pick the equation that seems to be the most convenient. So in these two distances that we're setting up between the general form of the circles and the point they must go through, well, that's just the distance between two points. 
and we're getting that equation r squared is equal to y squared minus 10y plus 34. And we have r squared in terms of y because that angle bisector was a vertical line. A lot of these questions, this is going to be in terms of x because your, your center is going to be described as x comma, you, you know, mx plus b where it's going to be some kind of expression in terms of x. Now, <clears throat> the distance between this point 2x plus 3y plus 10 is equal to 0, one of our tangent lines, and the general form of the center of our circles. Uh, I've had it already written up here once, but the distance is equal to the absolute value of a times x sub i, 1, plus b times y sub 1 plus c over the square root of a squared plus b squared. hope uh, my dog in the background is not too distracting. So I'm taking the x sub 1 and y sub 1, the x and y values from my point here, and I'm plugging them in as negative 3 and y, and of course my coefficients of a are 2, 3, and 10, and just simplifying all that work out, we have another equation that is describing r squared uh, in terms of y. So we have r squared in terms of y, which is again the distance between the center and the tangent line. We have r squared in terms of y, which is describing the distance between the general form of the center and the point. Let's set these equal to each other and solve for y, which is going to be uh, the y coordinate of our center. Then we'll have to finish up, you know, finding out what x is. So we set our two expressions for r squared in terms of y equal to each other. Did a little razzle-dazzle, uh, divided everything by 2 to make the numbers a little bit smaller. Did some factoring of a quadratic where our leading coefficient is something a little bit bigger than 1. And got down to a point where our two values for y, now the x-coordinate of the center was negative 3. Yes, I missed that negative in the notes there a little bit. I apologize for that. We got y-coordinates of 3 and 35.5. Plugging those into, you know, the easier of the two expressions, describing what r uh, squared is equal to, because right, because the equation of a circle is x minus uh, h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. Don't really need to know the radius. I need to know what r squared is equal to. We got uh, 929.25 when we plugged in the y value of 35.5, and we got a r squared value of 13. When we plugged in the y value of 3, and here are the two equations of our circles uh, that we believe are tangent to the two lines given and the point that was given. Now, <clears throat> yeah, so y coordinate of 35.5 is quite large. Uh, that's why it seems like this one little sort of uh, sliver, uh, bottom sliver of a circle here is because that point, uh, that center has a y coordinate that's way up there at 35.5. Uh, our other answer of x minus 3. Yeah, okay, the x-coordinate is negative 3 for the center. y minus 3, so the y-coordinate of our center is 3, and this isn't graph paper or anything, but, you know, I try to draw this fairly accurately, and it looks like, uh, looks like we have a y-coordinate of 3. And uh, so a good graph of what was going on with the original problem is a nice way to check uh, the reasonableness of our solution, and it looks like it's okay. So I'm Mr. Tarou. Bam! Go do your homework! <laughs>